I've been trying to make a game using Swift Playgrounds for the better part of the last couple of months. It is going well. I mean, I am making progress and I will release this game to the App Store soon. But I've come to find a lot of the shortcomings of Swift Playgrounds and I have come to the conclusion that it is absolutely anti-game development. Let me explain. All right, so there's a few things. I have talked about some of this in previous videos. I'm gonna recap them and then I'm gonna talk to you about the biggest one that I just found out about this week. First, there's just the fact that Swift Playgrounds is designed as a Swift UI based app and it allows you to build and prototype apps quickly. And I think that is the best thing about Swift Playgrounds is that it is a really good prototyping tool. However, it does limit what you can do from a game development side. And that is because you are lacking things like SKS files, which are like your scene editor. So you can't really do a lot of world design or, or actual game design in a visual way. Everything has to be done programmatically. And that can be great for some people. Some people really like that style of development, but if you're a visual type of person like me, it's it really becomes very difficult to kind of line all these things up. Along the same lines as this is your ability to create particle effects is severely limited as well. And other things like animations can be quite difficult too, just because you don't have access to the tools that Xcode has. But then we get to things like the exclusion of being able to add in-app purchases to your, your app. So whether you wanna have a free game with like a demo level and then to get people hooked and then upgrade them to you know, unlock future levels down the line, or if you want to add DLC down the line, or even just, you know, like how most games are monetized these days with in-app purchases for some type of consumable. It really limits what you can do because if you're using Swift Playgrounds, you're a small developer, you're not going to have the budget to get people to, to pay to download your app. It's gonna be hard enough to find downloads for a free app. But the thing that really gets to me is that I was recently trying to add Game Center leaderboards into my game. And Swift Playgrounds does not allow you to add that capability into a Swift Playgrounds app. And this is something that confuses me because Swift Playgrounds is fundamentally designed to be a tool to teach people how to code. It's to introduce people into the Swift language and it's to really try and lock developers in early to designing specifically for Apple. And now with Apple having Apple Arcade, which are games designed for iOS and iPad OS and TV OS, you would think that they would want to encourage young and up and coming developers to build games using their tools. But with Swift Playgrounds, they're making it very hard for you to write a game on your iPad. You can do it, but I still really don't think that it's the right tool for the job. And maybe Apple doesn't either, and that's why they've chosen to hamstring it. I think there's potential here. I think Swift Playgrounds has an opportunity to be great, and I hope that in the coming updates that they're gonna continue to build this out and add some of these missing features. If they can add simple ways of, of adding these capabilities and making it so that a Swift Playgrounds app is more polished and you're able to do these kinds of things, I think we'll see more new developers who already own iPads and who are playing games on their iPad say, hey, can I make a game with Swift Playgrounds? And they can try and publish that right to the App Store, but it needs to have these capabilities. It needs to have functionality for people to want to do this. Swift Playgrounds 4 was a big leap forward. And I think, that they have a roadmap for it. Time will tell. Anyway, I hope you liked this little chat. If you did, click the like button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.